Right, this is the front of the car that I've just made. Okay, this is just a few things. These are stainless steel lights off of eBay that are just under 40 quid. Um, this is 6 mil aluminium like this that I'm going to use for the back mud guards. I've got a friend of mine to with a machine to a bench it to use for the mud guards and obviously I've had to work it out so the the lights don't hit when you do the lock on it right the mesh at the back is off of an ironing board that you can get um, these bars I've welded I've got some of those barbecue type rats a pound each from the boot fair i've cut them up just to get the metal and i've used a strip of metal at the top and the bottom drilled holes in it even and then i've just welded it at the top and the bottom to make the actual grill okay these lights are off of vespa lambert a scooter these are led indicators that i've got from china these lights are about between four and five quid um, that you can that came from China. This I've kind of um, had made up, um, lasered out. That was they were two pounds for the cross, two pound for the base, and obviously I've had to smooth it up and polish it up and then tap threads underneath so it doesn't look how it's um, fixed. Right, I've gone over to using LED lights. Because they're much brighter. This is the kind of wood that I'm using um, on some of the corners um, to glue and fix these um, parts together. Right, this is how I've made the curved boot. This is a piece of 3.6 ply. What I've done is I've done two layers of time. I've rolled the glue on it. This is an old shower, shower curtain type thing, made of glass. I've packed it across here with a couple of clamps to make sure I don't break it. And then what I've done is I've rolled the glue on this and another layer. Then I've put loads of scaffold poles because I've got a load across there. And then I've put sand on top, bags of sand and cement to hold it down. Then when I've glued that, when that's dry, I've took off the poles and that, and then I've rolled in another layer of glue and another one until I've eventually got four layers, which is this. <coughs> and that's what that was laying in there. Right, this is a garage door handle that I've turned into a boot handle by making bits that fit on it. Right, when you put your hinges on, I've glued a couple and screwed a couple of pieces of wood here. When you put your hinges on, because this is curved, you need to angle it slightly so the screws don't hit. I've had to make this piece and put an M6 bolt in it to hold it so it locks it and closes it like that. Well, <clears throat> right, this is a four and a half inch angle grinder, okay, with a one mil metal cutting blade on. If you want to cut this out, okay, what you need to do is to cut, get into it to cut it all out because you want it. So you don't want to drop a skill saw or anything in there. So what I've done on here is I've clamped a metal straight edge on there and I'm just cutting through enough to be able to get a thin saw in there after like this. It's stirring a bit. Well, that's just got you in there, so you can get your saw in there, okay? You can soon sandpaper off, soon sandpaper off the bird bit, okay? That's that. When it's painted, you won't see it anyway. Right.
Right. On, on this coat bit of pry, what I've done is I've marked I've marked the inside of the car where it's gonna be cut. Okay. And then I've cut out I've cut out a piece of 18mm ply from an offcut I had, right? Then I've screwed and screwed it on there, and then that's enabled me to cut cut the excess off the end to make it so that it's going to screw on there. Okay, right. These these sides of the car, it's much easier to screw your bits of wood and put your little bolts for it and put your hinges on while you've got the car side before you glue it because on previous occasions I've done it the other way round and I've been messing around and found it very hard, much harder to do that. Whereas if you do that first, it makes life much easier later on. To get the fronts of these cars really shiny, because this is the bottom of your actual sink, what I've bought is, this is Rhino Grip Red Line kind of Velcro back sandpaper, okay? And then it's quite expensive, works out about 30 quid for nine rolls, something like that. And what I've done is I've gone over with 240 grey, then 400, then 800, then 1200, then I've polished it a bit to make it a, look a bit like chrome. Right, this is the seat part. You can see I've screwed and glued bits around there like that because really you need a hole in there to be able to get it anything and also the padded seat slips in afterwards. Okay, I'm putting a different bit on the back here. Right, now to cut this hole out because I didn't want the plywood that's coming out, what you can do is you can get one of these saws and it's cutting an inch and a quarter from the back of the blade. Okay, what you can do is clamp a bit of wood on there. Then you can nose it in and slide it along to get a bit of a cut. Same again, all the way round and finish it off with a jack saw. And then you've got your, got your hole cut out. I'm going to fix the body on now. Right, I've... Screwed all the bits of wood on, okay, so it's all glued up now, so there's no way can I take these bits off now. If I want to take the body off, then I've got to take off this tiller and disconnect the front so the body lifts up out of there like that so I can spray paint it. Right, now the next job is I've leveled this back off and it's all glued up. I've got some mahogany and I've rebated it and cut it so it's exactly level with the 12 mil ply because I'm going to glue it and fit it on there like that for the back end, okay? The size of this, the top is an inch finished sanded and the sides I've gone just over an inch and an eighth, but it doesn't matter. So it's really inch by inch and an eighth, roughly. Rebate it out so it's going to glue on there. That's the next job. Right, I've put one coat of this um, Ron Seal Deep Mahogany on there just to seal it in case the glue got in there. And then I'll put the mahogany round three parts there right so that I can sort out the seat and I'm going to put a I'm going to put a piece of mahogany on here I'm going to put a piece of mahogany here for the back of the seat then make a little boot here but I'm going to raise it up so that I can put some groceries groceries in there so that's the next job I've had these two pieces of aluminium curved on a machine, a friend of mine. These are going to be the back mud guards. 
I tried bending it by hand, but I couldn't get it as good. It kept flying back, so they're going to end up as mud guards each side on the back. And this is six mil. The reason I'm using six mil, something really thick, is because if you're going along, you don't want to leave any edges that any children can or anyone can cut their hands on. Well, I've cut a few bits of mahogany and bits of walls. Oh, this is roughly what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a lid on it so it's a bit of a boot to go on the back end and get that sorted out. And that's about the height of the back seat I'm going to have on there when it's padded and upholstered. Well, I've fixed the bits of wood on it now. It's obviously got to have some chains on it to stop it coming off. And uh, it'll be nice when it's all varnished up and a few holes won't fill in. I've used this inch foam and 12 mil plywood for the seats. Put a few holes in so when you lean back on it, it lets the air out. And I've stapled these on with just a hand stapler. So this fits on the back there. And it screws from the other side. And I've sunk the top in with these stainless steel screws so they go in flush. So that this lid doesn't hit on it. And that's just the same, the bottom of that. To let the air out, staple gun, and then that fits in in there. It's a bit tight. And that just fits in there like that. I've wired out the back lights using some of these old lights that are off of a discontinued model scooter. And I've used LED bulbs, 5 watts, because they're much brighter. I'm hoping to fix the mud guards on today. I've cut a bit off because this was much too long and curved. And I've straightened out the ends to make it fit reasonably over there and I've got to clear this which is going up and down with the suspension so I might have to chop a few more bits off of this anyway I'm, I've made up some brackets and I've got to recut this but I intend to screw them from the other side like that then I can drill through this and because I'm going to make it look neat I'm hoping to use these coach bolts, stainless, and obviously after I've drilled it, I'm going to have to mess around filing out the square holes so they fit flush. It's a bit time consuming doing this, but at the end of the day, if you want it properly, it takes time. I've made the front windscreen out of an old door that was sewn away. It's um, some of this stuff they chuck away in these skips is brilliant. This is Sapili, which is more or less like mahogany. Okay, and what I've done is I've put a four mil slot in it. You could do this with a four mil router cutter, or I've done this with a saw. Okay, if you get a, a four mil slot so that you can, um, so it fits in there to make the screen. Right, I've used plugs, I've used plugs going the same grain to cover up the screw holes, okay, <clears throat> and where I've, <clears throat> where I've grooved that right the way down, I've put, I've cut some bits of mahogany, a sapete, and slotted them in there, hardly noticeable anyway after, rather than try and slot it part of the way it's a nightmare then on this bit i've put a piece of the rebated wood glued it on there like that so the screen the screen's going to sit on and screw like that 
I need to peel off this protective coat before I finish that. So basically that's the windscreen uh, finished out of the way. Well, I've done the mud guards now, cut them a bit shorter, got some wood around to cover where the sprockets are. All they need doing now is taking back off and polishing up so that they look shiny. Right, this is a lump of four inch box section that was an off cut that I got off of a friend. I'm using that to cut brackets, make brackets and things like this. I've made, as you can see, the one on the wing mirror, I've made them like this because I need to, I've put a, a nut underneath so that I can swivel these in, so I can tighten them up, tighten them up in place so they won't get broke when I move through a narrow doorway. So basically what it is, it's a lump of this cut off, Okay, I've highly polished it with the alley and in a way it's better even than chrome because if it gets a bit dirty, all you've got to do is just give it another polish and, and that's it basically. I have these crucifixes lasered out, okay, they're only a couple of quid each. They're a bit rough so obviously you've got to smooth them up which takes ages and on here, I've had to make up a jig to curve it, and it takes a while. This is one of those that I've polished up and cleaned up, tapped a couple of 5mm threads through the back. Watch out when you're doing this, you don't tap and drill and go right through. And then that is going on the back there like that. Looks good to me. Right, I need to put the dashboard and things in. Right, this is just a piece of an old wardrobe that I've chopped up. And I've got a guitar, small guitar amp that I've chopped up. I've had to extend the speaker word, uh, speaker lead cables, because um, the speaker's going to go in lower. So I've chopped that up and thrown the case away because it's not no longer required because it's going to go on here right now this dash I've loosened this tiller so I've made this piece so it's going to slot in there and then drop down with a bit of luck and go like that this is to cover all this up and make yourself a dash right this bit this is where the battery compartment's going to go under the amp, and then the speaker's going to go there. This is all going to screw in here like this. I've done it in two halves, so you won't be able to get it in. So that goes in like that. Right, that fits in like that. Now, to let the air go through. From the front to keep the electric motor cool, I've, I needed a vent here. So what I've done is I've got one of these, which is just what you put on, hang an iron on the wall, and I've chopped one of them up. I've chopped it at the side, chopped these lugs off, altered it, sawn all these off with a one mil metal cutting angle grinder blade, and then this is going to screw in there I'm going to spray this black obviously and then I've got a little piece of aluminium strip going along here to finish it I'm nearly ready now to be able to take the body off and polish all the bits up and fit it back together right I've dropped the body off as you can see and I've got it ready for filling all the holes and spray painting it. Okay. I've got to use car filler and smooth it up before I spray it. Also, I've made up a couple of bits of wood here that go each side so that when the batteries are in, when the batteries are in each side of it, Nothing can fall out because if you put something here and it will come out the, 
come out and fall out onto the road or whatever. That's just to stop anything falling out each side of the batteries, yeah? I've taken the body off of the car so I could paint it. I've got it all painted up and I'm more or less ready to put the body back on the chassis. Because the brake I made wasn't a real success, I've decided to put a disc brake on, which has come off of a scooter that was being scrapped, a rascal Viscount. I've had to make up a bracket and alter it to get it to fit so that I can fit it on there. Well, it's bolting back on. As soon as I've checked the brake out, um, I'm going to put the body back on and I should be able to get it completely back together again now and maybe try it later today. Don't talk to me about politics Give up the people that are full of tricks Nice people, I must say You mentioned poverty, they look away Yet they still talk about love Yet they still talk about love I want to do something good to do be proud of Don't want to do anything that you be ashamed of It's no good saying, it's no good saying. I want to change the world I want to change the world I only wish I could this country leaders that I despise Selfish, greedy people full of lies Chosen to stand for the good of mankind Come on, you must think we're all blind Yet they still talk about love Yet they still talk about love I want to do something good that you'd be proud of Don't want to do anything that you'd be ashamed of 